Okay, our goal is to sort out how we're going to manage writing the moment for a shaft with some arbitrary number of loads on it. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my coordinate system to that shaft, an XY positive Z coordinate system as shown here. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach some loads to this shaft. First, I'm going to re represent the reaction at the left side as RA, the reaction at the right side as RB. And we're going to consider all the loads being in the XY plane. I'm going to put a force F1 at a location X x1 to the right. I'm going to put a force F2 at a location x2 to the right. I'm going to put a force F3 at a location of x3 off here to the right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a distributed load of load intensity Q newtons per meter, pounds per inch, whatever you so choose. I'm going to have it start at x4 and I'm going to have it end at x5. Okay, now we got to write the moment for this thing. So we got to remember that our moment equation as a function of x is just going to be Ra times x minus f1 times, these are these singularity function brackets, x minus x1 to the first power minus F2, X minus X2 to the first power, minus F3, X minus X3 to the first power, minus Q over 2, X minus X4, that's going to be to the second power, and then I have to turn it off once I go beyond X5. Okay, and there is my moment equation. I got it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show you an example using an Excel spreadsheet of how you input the loads F1, F2, and F3 at locations from the left side measured in this and these cells, X1, X2, and X3, although I labeled them differently here. This is a distributed load here in this cell of some magnitude you put wherever you want. You can put it where you want it to start and where you want it to stop. You put the ultimate tensile strength, of the, uh, the yield strength of the material, the ultimate tensile strength, the elastic modulus, and then you have to write equations so that you can figure out what the moment happens to be. And this is an example of a moment equation. And so we will take that moment equation. Okay, so this is now the Excel equivalent of the equation right up here. Okay, so all we're doing is we are saying that the value X right here resides in column B, row 17. And so you see B17 showing up in a number of locations here, which are going to be related to all of these turning things on and turning things off equations that we have in the uh, equation from above. Okay, so B17 is the X. It just so happened that I put the, the, them in column B, row 17. I put my X values in there. And so the RA is this C13. That's the first term right over here. There's RA. So what do I have next? Then I have F1, which is at column C, and you see it has a negative sign in front of it. And I'm taking that, I'm taking X minus the location of X1. Well, that is in column D. And now I got to turn that on. So the way you turn things on, you'll notice this little equation right there. It says B17 greater than D2. And so the D2 is the location where the force is located. And it doesn't, this term is equal to zero for B17 less than D2. And it's equal to one for B17 greater than D2. Well, I should say less than or equal to for it being equal to zero because the term just plain disappears below that. So it has to be greater than D2 in order for this to turn on and it only becomes one. So every time I'm replacing the bracketed term by this logical term in Excel, okay? The rest of the terms you can sort out on your own. They are simply these load intensity terms. You see I have a second power in the load intensity terms and all I do is modify that X minus the starting location by this logical on or off equation in Excel. I, I see that again over here where I'm turning something on and off. So it's really pretty straightforward. You can completely mimic these terms in the singularity function using these logical statements in Excel.